Welcome back to the boat shop and today is February 21st of 2024 and just again a quick update um, you can see I got this stuff uh, cleaned up a little bit and sanded and uh, it looks uh, it looks good yeah it's uh, laid in there quite nicely and got a nice smooth transition there so yeah I'm happy with that um Moving back, I got another piece in here. Um, this piece in here I put in. And uh, I had to, of course, move my, my blocks around or my supports around again. And what I did here now, um, so I can keep on working that way, I put the support that I had taken out, put it in here. And now that we're, we've got a close to finished surface, we don't want to be messing it up, you know, scratching it up and putting whole, extra holes in it and whatnot. So, so I made a, a block here and I glued, used some contacts and glued some of that quarter inch neoprene that I used uh, on the fuel tanks. It's got a fairly grippy surface. And what I did then was I pulled one of these screws out and, and ran a, a screw in through there. So it's also got some support there. And then of course it's screwed in here. But um, at some point I'm gonna have to do something different. You know, when I go to finishing this stuff, I can't run screws through it. So I'm thinking I probably am going to have to run my supports up from the cradle to the side. And then maybe put some pieces in that way to, to help hold them up. I don't know. Um, if anybody's got any really good ideas on how to support the boat on this cradle, you'll have to let me know. Now, the reason this cradle is so narrow is because George wanted you to build it so that it would fit on a on a standard semi low boy trailer, so it's only five and a half feet wide and obviously the risk there is well you don't have a whole lot <clears throat> you know to support to, but uh there's also a risk then of the thing tipping over, so I don't know when I go to move it out of here, I don't know what we're gonna do. We could extend, get some more beams and, and extend extend them out uh, and put some skids out farther. And I could do that too in here even. I could put some, some beams in there and then run supports out there and that would give me a better angle support back to the, to the, to the cradle to hold it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but like I said, if anybody's got any really good ideas on how to go about that, you'll have to let me know. But uh, the next piece is cut in fiberglass is on it and the epoxy is on it. I got one more day to let that epoxy cure before I can put this piece in here. And that's actually halfway then. That'll be, that'll be the halfway point on the boat. So we've only got three more pieces. So we're going to be done here uh, with this side of the boat at least putting the plywood on next month in March quite easily will be done in March and then I suppose it's gonna be a matter of I'm gonna do a big cleanup in the shop and I'm gonna to have to move stuff around to start working on the other side to give me more room on the other side to work have to move some of that lumber and stuff that's stored over there get it out of there um, on this edge here now this this plywood I didn't really even try to make it you can see it's it's not you know cut real accurately to the bottom here and there wasn't really any need to make any real accurate cuts there i mean i would i did draw a pencil line along the bottom here to, to make this cut but i left a little bit long um because we're coming back with the, the planer then and we're bringing you know running the planer at this the bottom planking level and then getting it more or less you know smooth and then the next piece of plywood that goes on the bottom that comes up here, it overlaps this direction, of course, and then it overhangs, well, usually <laughs> overhangs just a little bit too. And I'll come back again with the planer, and this time I'll come this way, laying the planer against this surface. So we have a nice, should have a, a decent edge here then. But we're not done then, because we really don't want a sharp edge and it won't be horribly sharp, but you still don't want a sharp point there uh, to run the fiberglass over when we fiberglass these joints. So what I'll do is I'll, once I get this 
this plane down to, to this level here. I'll come back for probably the belt sander and, and, and round it off just a little bit so it makes a nice smooth transition and and the fiberglass lays on there a little better. But uh, yeah, the plane is working better. I had talked earlier about maybe having to sand that because I was worried about chip out, but um, I'm not having any issues with that at all. And some of that what probably helps is the fact that there's epoxy and fiberglass cloth on there. It keeps it from, from tearing out, the wood from tearing out on the edges. But that's all going all right. Uh, again, just kind of slow going but it's but it's going all right and uh here's the next piece that's going in like i said it's ready to go i just got the last coat of epoxy on there yesterday so it needs another day to to cure and this here is a, a vent fan not for the boat but it's a solar powered vent for the building i'm going to put this up on the roof and i'm I tried it out yesterday when I got it, and it's like solar powered, and it was working fine, moving quite a bit of air. I don't know, a little over a thousand feet per minute, I think, is what it's rated at. But I want to get the heat out of the top of this building in the summertime, because it gets just miserable up there, and I mean absolutely miserable up in that, you know, and even inside the cabin and whatnot. So if I can move some of that air out of here, and it also has a power supply. So you can run it on 12 volts or 120 volts. Even it's got an adapt AC adapter, but uh, but so you can run it at night too if you want to. But the thing is, it's got a thermostat in it. The thermostat set at like 78 degrees, and so when the thermostat and it's got a, a remote control switch, you can turn it on and off with with little remote control, little key fob type thing. Um, but you can't do both. You can't have the automatic part <laughs> or turn it on and off at will. So I don't know which is going to be best. If you unplug the the heat uh, the the thermometer from it, um, then you have to use the key fob, and it, there's no automatic function to it at all. Where if you have the ther thermometer plugged in, eh, then it's automatic, and you don't have to worry about it. But so yeah, I don't know. Maybe the automatic is going to be the best. I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, I'm assuming that if you plug it into power, it'll run solar power first. And then, I don't know, I could test that, I guess, once I get it up there. But anyway, I think that's going to help this summer. Because I'm going to be doing more work up higher this summer and, and, and inside the boat. And boy, it sure would be nice to get that hot air moved out of there. So I may even get another one of these. Put one in initially and and uh, see how it does and then maybe put another one in but up here i've started on that cabinet that i was talking about in fact yesterday i did a little little shopping run again and i picked up some lumber so i can kind of continue on in here with this when i've got a little time and energy Um, and this is the start of this this cabinet in here I had to pattern a couple pieces here this piece down here this end piece that seals up this this uh, settee in edge or side whatever I had to make a pattern for that because of course it you know fit the contours of the hole there and then I patterned this piece and made this piece and I got this piece in now and uh, I, like I said I bought some solid uh, hardwood stock to, to to do some framing and whatnot and i'm kind of winging it i got a couple ideas as to how to go about this but i'm winging it just a little bit too fortunately this is more or less a square surface between here and here so i can put a strip in here to frame against and then start working inside and then i think i'm just going to face frame this with that that hardwood uh stock that i bought and, and and just paint it i started painting this i painted this this outside surface i primed it and painted both of these pieces and i didn't do this side i got to thinking about it well if i paint every piece 
before I put it in, I'm going to be here forever. Because, um, <laughs> you know, you're talking two days for a primer and then a top coat. And, yeah, so I'm going to just put it together, get it assembled, uh, get it built, and then paint the whole thing. And then the doors, I will probably, kind of like this, I'll probably... I don't know, I haven't decided for sure yet, but I'll probably do do just a varnished wood for the doors. However many doors or drawers or combination thereof I, I decide to put in here, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we got to start here anyway, and I got some lumber so I can continue on. Again, this is awful putsy work because you got all these weird angles and everything. It's, uh, yeah... Yeah, it's never going to be easy. I also looked at buying a bunch of vents, uh, some little round vents. Uh, they go into a two and an eighth inch hole, so I can drill holes like in the in the cabinets and stuff, and then pop those vents in. They're stainless steel vents, and they aren't that terribly expensive. They just kind of friction fit in there. But we want to get ventilation in all these cabinets and everything. So, and we want to keep ventilation from the from the bilge coming up too so i don't want to totally seal off like like these air airways between the between the sole and the in in the cabinets here so somehow i'll have to leave either put vents in or leave gaps for, for, for air to circulate up and through and i was thinking even up here too you know the cabinet i may just just end the cabinet at the bottoms of these deck beams and leave this all open up here for ventilation so if you got ventilation up there and put some smaller vents in down here you should have a uh, pretty good airflow and i'm still thinking about putting positive ventilation in in the bilge i'm thinking about putting putting some vents in you know like down in places like this and then actually having a fan a low power fan something that doesn't use a whole lot of power but having a, a fan that you can you can run to to put some positive ventilation into the into the bilge and where all we need those i'm not sure but um but that's something i've been thinking about too so um yeah that's just about all i've been up to this week i ordered uh a few more supplies Yeah, I'll show you those when I get them, I guess. Um, got kind of some ideas there to make things a little bit simpler, easier to work with. So I'll show you those when I get them. All right, that'll be it for today.